how you get your first check is a very, very interesting thing. And, uh, you know, and it's something that uh, we'll all make that mistake many, many times and it's a big, big learning uh, as to what happens. How do you get that first check from your first investor? A lot of times we spend uh, weeks trying to prep up the business plan presentation and uh, how you're going to phrase certain things, how, how you're going to get across the excitement of the opportunity, why you have some unique IP and so on and so forth. But finally, that first check really has nothing to do with all of that. It really has to do with an emotional connect between the founders and the investor. The investor is betting on the founders that they will do something exciting and he inherently believes that these are the right guys to execute that idea. And the seasoned investor already knows from day one that the idea that's being presented will be scrapped in no more than three to four months that there'll be some new information that comes in and you're going to shift your entire model to go after a different market. Maybe it's the same market, but a different product. Maybe it's the same product, same market, different team. There'll be variations that will make the business look very different in less than six months for sure. So that first check and that first investor is always based on an emotional connect between the investor and the entrepreneurs. And which is not to say that it's not important to go well prepared to your meeting. You want to go into the meeting well dressed, on time, with a presentation that makes sense, hangs together with a team that looks highly qualified, can execute the plan. All those things are important, but that's not the reason you're raising money. That is the table stakes. That's almost like a given because that investor is meeting another 10 teams and business plans exactly like that, of that quality. But then he picks you because he's got that emotional connect to you. So I think that's something that takes a while to figure out that finally the softer aspects of the first meeting far outweigh anything quantitative. In that meeting, how you're able to like really relate to that investor, maybe it's the same schools you went to, maybe you have the same common friends or maybe you have like a hobby, maybe you both did uh, do or, or enjoy similar things. Now, all of these things create that emotional bond and that is what drives that first check. Now, how you get your second check and your third check are of course very, very different because then people are going to look at the business. What have you done in the last six months? What have you done in the last one year? Have you delivered what you promised? How happy is the first investor with you? Is there like any conflict at the board level? All those factors. But that is for check number two and check number three. But check number one has less to do with the business plan and more to do with are you able to connect with that investor? So when you have startups which have like very exciting new products and new technologies uh, which seem to be on the cutting edge, they're using some new programming language, a new set of tools to build it, it's really flashy. And then you ask yourself, so how does one think about such a business? How do you put a value on it? Is it a product or service worth taking to market and uh, what is the way to price it? For me, all those questions come down to the basics of what is the problem that you're trying to solve with that cool technology? And is a problem worth solving? Whose problem are you solving and who's going to pay for it? So I think finally, whatever be the technology, you've got to come back to the problem that's being solved and who's going to pay for it. Because that is going to be the foundation of any business that you build. And it's a very, very hard thing to do because when you're uh, young, you're building this really cool stuff, you believe that it's only a matter of time that people are going to come to acknowledge this really cool thing that you've built but actually that's not the way that a real business is going to get built because finally people have to pay for it. So I think that has to be the foundation for whatever you do when you build a business is that you have to use these cool tools but for a purpose. They have to solve a problem. They themselves are not what people are buying, they're buying a solution to a problem. And I think that's very important to make the distinction between the coolness of the product and the business you're trying to do. So when I see various plans come through, and um, uh, even as a small investor, I probably get about five plans a day from people. And of course, some of the VCs, especially like the big branded VCs, must be getting tens of plans a day. So how does one filter through all of these plans and pick the things that you want to take to the next level, which, which would be like a meeting with the entrepreneurs? So a very high level filter that most people apply is just to make sure that it's a space that is worth uh, being in. So you have some very high level filters in terms of uh, the market segments that I would be interested in or the fund would be interested in, and that would be a first level filter. 
and then uh, uh, you look at uh, the business plan very quickly and I'm, uh, I can tell you that most people would spend no more than, at least in my case, I would spend no more than uh, 30 seconds on a business plan. I, it could be a plan that is 10 pages or even 30 pages. I would not spend more than 30 seconds on it. I just skim through it and I say, okay, is this something that broadly makes sense? And then um, I would then move things to the next level and, and a fund might have like more resources that they might actually have someone dig through the plan a little bit more, see if like the numbers add up and all of that stuff. But in general, you can assume that given the volume of deal flow and the volume of plans that come through to most investors, it's something that people spend very little time to scan through. Okay, so the main step that happens is when you get that face-to-face -face meeting or your call with the investor. And what is the way that you then would get evaluated? So one thing I've learned over the years is that and it's something that uh, you will find is that uh, how well you are able to connect with that investor in that meeting is going to mean a lot. The details of the plan or the numbers where they all tie together, whether like a financial model makes a lot of sense or not, all those are sort of secondary to the fact that you need to connect with the investor. And that is what's going to take you to that first meeting to the next stage of discussion. Now at that meeting itself, if there's no connect between you and that investor, you can be sure that even if the plan sounds good, it's probably not going to go anywhere. They will tell you that we like it, why don't you come back later, why don't you come back when you make more progress, why don't you come back when you uh, have a stronger team and you add more people to the team, why don't you come back when you build the product. But keep in mind that there are some companies that are not being told that answer. Some companies are being told that, yeah, I know that you don't have a product ready, I know that you still uh, don't have like real business model ready, but we like you and we want you to come back and explain to us in more detail or talk to one of our like other colleagues as to uh, how we can work together. So keep in mind that that is all based on this very soft set of factors, nothing to do with your numbers and uh, the model and the product and your IP and all of those things. Those are all secondary. In that meeting, you need to be able to connect with your investor so that they will then put in the effort to actually dig into what it is that you're saying. And I would say that in most of these first meetings, that decision of whether you, I mean, meaning you as entrepreneur and me as uh, like a potential investor, whether it's going to go anywhere, will be decided in probably less than the first 10 minutes. In that first 10 minutes, you get to know whether this is a team that you can work with or it's not. And if uh, you've made that connect, then you'll see the increased level of engagement and interaction with the investor in the remaining half an hour that you have with the investor, where there'll be far more questions about the model, about this and that. Otherwise, it would be something which is more of like a token set of questions and you're out of the door and you'll be told that uh, you're too early for us, uh, you're not in the sector that we target, uh, we'll uh, talk to you in a six months. These are all the types of answers you should expect to get if you've not made that connect.
the section 3 first question, how does one write a good business plan? So, it is what you learn in school that you should make the plan complete, you should address various aspects of it as to uh, what is the market you're going after, what is your product, what is like really unique about your product, what's IP that you've got, who's in your team, what is their experience, how are you going to execute the plan, what are the operational metrics you're going to track. So I think all of those things are very important for a business plan. So everything that you've been told in your uh, MBA classes are all true. You should have a full-fledged business plan that covers all aspects of how you're going to build this business, build it to scale, give a huge exit to your investors and all of that stuff. So all of that stuff is good. But there is something that is even more important about the business plan, which is what's the story that you're trying to tell? Because finally, you're talking to people who are just like you and you need to engage with them in a way that they can start to like really connect with you and your story. So you have to go into the business plan presentation as if you're telling a story. And it's a story that you want to take the potential investors along with you and get them engaged in that story as to how you're going to build this product, build this business and grow it. So don't treat the business plan as a place with a lot of uh, details about the product architecture, what tools you're using and uh, what APIs you're using and why this tool is better than that tool. Don't get lost in that degree of detail. Don't get lost in terms of like a financial model where you're saying that it's actually 6.893% you're going to grow in the first year. Because those are all numbers and those are all numbers that you can tweak on a spreadsheet and people know that, you know what, that's just a financial model that can be tweaked and adjusted as you learn more about it. But the big picture item is a story. What is it that you want that investor to take away from you? Because he's going to pay attention for the first few minutes and then he's going to tune out. So in the first few minutes, you've got to tell him a story that's going to stay in his mind as to why this is something that's exciting that he needs to get on board. So the danger with a high quality business plan that addresses everything is that it's a big plan, 20 slides, and there's a lot of detail, and you will be very tempted to show how much research you've done on the business plan. You'll be tempted to go down into too much detail. You'll be tempted to talk about the technology and the architecture and the financial model and all of your past experiences and uh, how you came upon this new idea and all of that stuff. But the danger with all of that is that the detail might prevent you from actually telling the most important part of your presentation, which is your story. You've got to keep in mind that this is a storytelling exercise more than uh, a business plan presentation exercise. Section 3, question 2. So when you look at what makes a startup exciting to fund, so one we talked about having the connect between the investor and the founders. The other thing is the chemistry between the founders. There's nothing that can kill a startup faster than any discord between the founding team. Even the slightest amount of discord and you find that all the money that you put into that company is going to go down the drain because there's no way that a young company at that stage can survive any discord among the founders or even among the senior management team. So one of the factors I would look for is what is the chemistry between the senior team, between the founders? And that's a very, very important factor. So one is the chemistry between the investor and the founders. The second is the chemistry between the founders. And then I would look to see what makes this team uniquely qualified to execute that plan. So you could have a team that uh, has all the right backgrounds uh, and uh, the right schools, the right experiences. They all uh, went to certain schools. They all worked for Google or McKinsey and so on and so forth. But then again, you've got to ask yourself a question as to what makes the experiences of these founders unique to the plan that they want to execute. So I think that's another important factor that sort of uh, is worth keeping in mind. And the other thing is, are the founders the types of people who take input, are flexible in their thinking or not? Because the plan that they might have worked on might seem ironclad, geared for success and so on and so forth, but finally when they start to execute, they will face a lot of challenges. They got to be the types of people that will take input from other seasoned executives, uh, they will uh, be able to make changes to their thinking, be flexible in the thinking so that they can say that, you know what, I was wrong, we should not take option A, we should take option B. And that kind of a flexible attitude is going to be totally critical for success in any new environment. So all of these factors would go into, is this startup uh, fundable?
section 3 third question. So when I started out and I had to pitch for money, I didn't realize what a difficult thing it is to do. It is not the same as trying to pitch to customers, which is actually much easier because to a customer, it is where they sort of know what you're there to do and uh, there are people who might be, uh, for example, say that you had like a tech product, you're talking to like a CTO level person, a VP engineering, they're also like really technical people. So they sort of understand what you're there to do and you're able to make that connection. But when you pitch for money, it's a very, very different game because you're talking to people who may not be technologists, uh, who are looking at you from a different lens. They're looking at you from the point of view of, is this person going to be able to build a business that's going to be successful and make me money? And he's not that focused on the product. So the first few times that I went to pitch for money, I made uh, all of these standard mistakes where I went in, I started up with the product demo to showcase what a cool product we've built. Then we would focus on the architecture, how we built the product, why it was built using the latest tools. So all of these things that finally, it took me a long, long time to figure out that when you pitch for money, you need to focus on how you're going to make that person money. It's not about the product, it's not about all of those things, it is about how is this business going to return an investment to this person. So the big learning from there was that too much detail in meetings with the investor is not good because that investor is actually coming from a different world. It is possible that that investor has a tech background, he might have started off himself as an entrepreneur, but keep in mind that or period of time the investor becomes an investor. He's looking at it from the point of view of do I want to put money into this company and will I make money from this? And if so, how safe is my money with this person? So when you look at it from that lens, it's not so much the specifics of the product or the features or the functionality that you've built. It is more about what is it that you're trying to do and why is this going to be exciting to the investor? So it's back to this notion of storytelling. You know, you've got to tell about your business in a way that your investor gets excited about it.